My name is Stephen Payne. I'm a naval architect and I was the build project manager for Rotterdam 6, which subsequently became Borealis sailing with Fred Olsen lines. Rotterdam 6 was built to be the successor to the highly successful flagship of Holland America line Rotterdam 5 that had been in service from 1959 up through to the delivery of Rotterdam 6 in 1997. And the idea was to create the ambience so that loyal passengers to Rotterdam 5 would seamlessly transfer to Rotterdam 6 and that the ship be configured in such a way that she could undertake the world cruises and extended voyages that Rotterdam 5 had been known for. In order to make Rotterdam 6 have the speed required compared to the earlier Statendams on which the design was based, we had to find the hull forward, we had to widen the beam slightly to preserve the stability, and we had to have a lot more power, um, about 50% more power, in order to raise the speed from the 21 knots of the Statendam class to the 25 knots that the Rotterdam 6 required. My first impressions of Borealis, I must admit, are extremely positive. There are elements here obviously harking back to her Dutch heritage when she was um, with Holland America as Rotterdam 6, but Fred Olsen has incorporated a lot of their own artwork and various uh, memorabilia, which, which gives the ship a tremendous character. The building of, of Rotterdam 6 was quite a protracted affair. We, we had many problems to solve. And so when the ship was finally delivered in Venice towards the end of 1997, it was a big joyous occasion. Um, more so, in fact, because Rotterdam 5 had already left Holland America's service so the ship was desperately needed and uh, everybody was pleased to have this ship in service. Throughout the ship there are echoes of the, the old Rotterdam 5 in the mural at the forward end of the um, main dining room and various dance floors around the ship were actually those that um, were taken from old Rotterdam 5. And much of the artwork and heritage from her days as being flagship of Holland America are still here on board, and they greatly add to Borealis's um, atmosphere and ambience. When a ship is delivered, it's customary for the shipyard to give a gift to the ship. And this ship was built by Fincantieri at the Marghera Venice shipyard. And here on board, even today as Borealis, we see a, a very nice blue glasswork made by Murano called the Wave and that was the gift from Fincantieri to the Rotterdam, now Borealis, um, symbolising um, waves. Very, very attractive uh, piece of glass. One of the most celebrated rooms on the old Rotterdam 5 was the ritz Colton Lounge. Marvellous two-deck high um, main ballroom for the first class and at the forward bulkhead, spanning the two levels, was this Aegean scene, um, brightly coloured artwork. And that has been recre recreated here on Rotterdam 6, or Borealis, and it adorns the main dining room on both the upper and lower level. When we were contemplating building Rotterdam 6, which is now Borealis, one of the things I was keen to do was to have echoes of the, the previous ship, the Rotterdam 5. And one of her most distinguishing exterior features was her twin side-by-side -side funnels. So I was particularly pressing to the shipyard that we must try and incorporate that here. And in fact, as we go up on the top deck, you can see that this ship has two side-by-side -side funnels very much echoing um, old Rotterdam 5. Although much of uh, Rotterdam 6 still remains here on board Borealis, 
there are various improvements and um, things that uh, Fred Olsen have done. Of course, the biggest change that there's no longer a casino and we have the morning lights, pub and uh, lounge area, very attractive space. And the former Explorer's Lounge has been supplanted by the new Botanical Room and the, the Oriental Tea Room. Two very nice spaces that um, on the Holland America ship don't exist. My late father was a tea taster and blender and when we were um, clearing out his effects we found two tea bricks and these were a, a very old-fashioned way of transporting tea where you compress the tea and they actually broke bits off to, to, to make tea. And we've often, as a family, wondered what to do with these um, two tea bricks. And when I came on here, the, the Borealis, and found out that there was going to be the um, Oriental Tea Room, I thought it appropriate that um, I should bring these tea bricks and donate them to the ship. It seemed just the right thing to do. Partway through the ship's career with Holland America Line, they chose to add a new block of cabins aft, which eliminated the outside um, aft swimming pool. Um, that still remains actually on the sister ship, which was originally Amsterdam, which now sails as Belet. And the aft area of, of this ship has the extra cabins and on the top deck where the pool would have been it is now um, laid out as a sort of garden area. The Borealis and um, no doubt Bolet, they offer what I would describe as a, a classic way of cruising. Cruising as it used to be in the past where things are, are much less hurried, there's more space more conversation at the bar, um, more genteel probably, and that's very, very suited to the clientele of, of Fred Olsen. And compared to many modern ships, this ship seems relatively um, uncrowded. There's always space in every lounge to sit down, and it's most significant where, when you call the lift, you're lifts come immediately and usually there is hardly anybody in the lifts. The Rotterdam 6 cabins were specifically designed for extended voyages. After all, the, the ship was designed to do world cruises and certainly that holds very good today with the ship sailing uh, as Borealis. There's lots of drawer space, lots of wardrobe space and the cabins are still very, very comfortable. Um, the bathrooms, although obviously they're, they're not um, like uh, brand new cruise ship bathrooms, but nonetheless, they're still very functional, very nice big shower unit. And all in all, I, I, I think the cabins are a real credit to Borealis. Coming back on board this great ship after so many years, I did wonder what sort of condition she would be in. And I must admit, I was absolutely very, very surprised at just how well maintained she is. Hardly a speck of rust anywhere. And what's really significant, the crew obviously feel deep pride in the ship. And she's always being cleaned. The cabins are vacuumed more than once a week. So on my time here, it's been done twice. People go along the corridors, cleaning the handrails all the time. So tremendous care is taken, and it really shows in this ship. And I'm sure with, with, with careful management, this ship could sail for many years to come. The observation lounge on Borealis used to be Rotterdam's crow's nest. And on the port side, there is an area that um, you could screen off and was used to hold the captain's private cocktail parties. And uh, so you could screen that off from the rest of the, the crow's nest proper. On the other side of the lounge, let's say it's now the um, observatory, 
there, there's still the parquet flooring existing from when the ship was built all those years ago. Still looks in very, very good condition. A distinctive feature, beginning with, in fact, the Staten Dams, is the, the atrium, and all these Holland America ships had a, a distinctive feature. And here on Rotterdam 6, now Borealis, we have a large clock, really oversized clock, showing um, different places in the world and the times where it would be. Very, very ornate and um, quite a striking centrepiece. Certainly one of the things that attracts people to Fred Olsen is the value for money and the premium product that you get for your cruise fare. Certainly whilst I've been on board, I've been surprised at the little touches that you, you would really feel belong to um, a luxury cruise line. And uh, it's been very refreshing to come here on Fred Olsen uh, and see how they do things. Those of us that work or even know ships know that some ships have an undefinable quality which we call a soul. And in fact, this ship, I feel very much, and, and certainly speaking to people that I've met on board, but we think this ship has a soul. And it's a, a combination of the care and attention that the crew have towards the ship, the disposition of the ship itself, its layout, so that people find it easy to get around. It's, it's nice size, it's not overwhelming. And also the tremendous artworks that you have around the ship, harking back to when she was a Grand Holland America flagship. So all these things make this ship, Borealis, very, very special. And in fact, it's so nice to be able to come on board a ship such as this, have a tremendous cruising experience, like the old days, afternoon tea and the like, and all the little touches it really does bring back British cruising back to as it was many years ago.